Um, I mean, you mentioned biofuels there, but you know, some people have been saying that well, essentially, you're taking the food out of people's mouths and putting it into your gas tank. You know, it takes several acres of well, an acre, I think, or something of farmland to, to produce a gallon of gas or from biofuels. Why do you? And, and also, I mean, cellulosic ethanol. It may be you know better as far as land use. But the amount of energy it takes to distill that yes, to, 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 is, 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 is very large. And, and, so, I don't, and so most of the, you know, more and more reports are coming out saying that biofuels actually aren't an alternative. But what, how do you feel? Biofuels is a very uh, controversial subject. Today, uh, about 1% of the total liquid uh, consumption is only from biofuels. And many countries have very ambitious policies, such as the United States, such as uh, Europe, such as Japan, to use more and more biofuels and we have calculated if all of these policies were to be put in place and realized in the year 2030 the share of biofuels in the total consumption will be about only six and seven or seven percent very very small and this would cause a lot of problem with the existing, existing technologies putting pressure on uh, food agriculture available land arable land is a key question and plus, in terms of the climate change consequences, uh, it may be uh, getting uh, oil from biofuel, getting fuel from biofuel may be much more problematic compared to uh, oil products. So it is not obvious it is better for environment. But this is with the existing technology. If we can get better technologies, which can uh, make use of biofuels in a much more environmental friendly way, in a much more efficient way, therefore much more economic, this can open doors for us. But we are not there yet. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of keeping your fingers crossed, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. And you can't invest in something that you don't really know. But you know. The, the private companies are investing a lot of money there, biofuels now, many companies. Yeah. So, I mean, going through the different yeah. alternatives, yeah. You know, tar sands. I, I talked to yeah. Lord Brown at BP, and he said, "Well, you know, the reserves are infinite, practically. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just a matter of price. You know, once the price has gone up yeah. high enough, yeah. why can't the tar sands make a difference?" Yeah, tar sands are very important. We have a lot of tar sands in in the, in in Canada. It is very important that we feel much more comfortable that there is a lot of reserves there. But again, the availability of the reserves doesn't mean that it will come to the pump station. There are at least three major problems in terms of tar sands. First, it is still uh, very expensive. And second, in order to uh, produce oil from tar sands, you have to put a lot of energy inside in that, in that, in that uh, production process. And uh, in this case, it is, for example, in the uh, gas, which is used natural gas in, in Canada which has a lot of implication in terms of cost and in terms of environment. And the third one is the, the transportation and refinery difficulties because tar sands are very heavy. It is something between oil and coal, very, very heavy, very low quality. So at, I don't think that it is only a matter of price. There are many technological and environmental barriers tar sands to increase their production substantially. Today, the, the so-called tar sands, non-conventional oil, in, uh, contribute about 1 million barrels per day to the uh, global uh, production out of 86 million barrels per day. And our expectation is in the next uh, seven, eight years, this can come to about 2.5 million barrels per day. Uh, important, but still very, very small. Okay, I mean, I was talking to a chap from Russia, and he was saying that natural gas could be the new you know, oil, really, over the next 20 years, that, you know, if we could get gas-powered cars going, because <coughs> the technology, they can use existing technology in the cars to, to have gas-powered transportation. What, what do you think about the, the f using gas? Uh, if we have to look at the natural gas uh, replacing oil, I see at least two major problems, and they are really major problems. One, a natural gas is uh, not an endless uh, resource as well, and we have certain uh, reserves of uh, natural gas. Perhaps the natural gas reserves are a bit bigger than uh, oil, but uh, uh, they are still uh, uh, limited, and uh, they are uh, concentrated in countries uh, where it is not very easy to get the gas out. Uh, Russia plus Iran make more than 50% of the uh, existing uh, proven uh, gas reserves. 
two countries in the headlines of the newspapers for energy and non-energy related reasons. So this is the first thing under reserves. And the second one, to replace uh, oil uh, by natural gas is very difficult in the case of uh, transportation sector in terms of cars. You need major technological improvements, which would mean money at the end of the day. And therefore, I see uh, big difficulties, natural gas easily replacing oil, in, at least in the next two, three decades to come.